full screen disc. I know that's a thing you can do. But. Hello and welcome back to the Lime Joint. This is not the third or fourth revival. I have uh, no idea. I've lost count at this time uh, at this point. And today with me, I have a very special guest. Hey, uh, hi, it's me. Hi, right. hello. This is Ben Saint from patreoncom slash Ben Saint, and also That's... Saint Comics. You know what? <laughs> That's what that used to be my catchphrase. I haven't said it in a while, but I think, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for the plug, I guess. Uh, right. yeah, I'm happy to be here talking about Bionicle with you. I'm uh, very, very happy to be here talking to you uh, about Bionicle as well. So, just to clarify a little bit about who you are, Ben Saint uh -huh. is a webcomic artist, troll, ween, and self proclaimed dimensional prophet of C197. and Hierophant to New Los Angeles City, aka New yeah. Milwaukee. Yeah, that that should clear it up. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, that's yeah. Uh, don't don't really care. Don't really care for the way that uh, the quickie portrays me. But you know that's okay. You know they're gonna say what they're gonna say. That's fine. Yeah, I, but I that's don't not what we're gonna talk about today. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't want to get too much into it, but yeah, I, I did read that page, and uh, it's uh, very strangely that, written. <laughs> it, it, every, everything on that website is very strangely written. Yeah, I I find it kind of baffling. Uh, Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, but so, other people would probably know you as the guy who makes those lectures on YouTube. Um, yeah, which that's one my is biggest your, thing? Yeah, which one is your most viewed one right now? Is it the Mega Man one? Oh no! It's the it's the it's the uh, CWC. It's the Sonichu one, right? Because I mean that's been up for like six years. It's at like, of course. I think it's at like one point three million or something. Mm -hmm. uh, Mega Man just hit six hundred k, which is not too bad. Very nice. That, I think that makes it my second most viewed, or it like that and Tails gets trolled are like neck and neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with time, uh, Mega Man will probably beat it out. And, I uh, think eventually, yeah, it's it's gonna be number two pretty soon. Yeah, uh, I hope. <laughs> I, I honestly think, you know, uh, I think you have me on here today because I am working on a Bionicle one, and I, I'm my, I think uh, that might do really well. I think Bionicle is a great subject for such a treatment, and I hope I do it justice, and I get a million billion views, and I make a million dollars. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah. Bionicle, of course, it, it's ripe for this kind of explanation video very long because you know those have been a, a thing on youtube for a while now the uh very long the, explain the very video. the very long video i think it i think it's i think it's lost it's like shock no one's like shocked by a very long video anymore but it's mm -hmm. it's it's a niche it's a particular niche uh and oh. i like them i also I, very I, much I, enjoy them yeah because uh yeah, it's just it's just neat to watch someone talk about a, a thing that they like a lot, um, which I understand. For sure, <laughs> you um you have some not so nice opinions about Bionicle. You do like it. Uh, you that's I, I wouldn't say. Look, I have I have criticisms. You have criticisms, which I agree it's with. Not, it's not it's not all it's not all sunshine. <laughs> right. So the the whole reason I I was even able, you know, aware that you're working on this and being able to get you on is because you've been streaming on Twitch, that you've been yes. playing some of the Bionicle games. Well, at this point, you've already I, finished. I, all I of them. did. I did. Well, not all of them, because I mean, not the Flash games. Because there's so many like Flash games from like 2005 or whatever, and they mostly uh, suck. So you're not missing out on much. Most of them are like pointless yeah no i was playing i what did i play i played minogue i played minogue 2 i played minogue mm -hmm. uh what, what else uh, uh ta tales of the tohunga i mean t i mean no of the Matoran. tales of the not matoran adventures i did play matoran adventures oh right no t t tales of the tohunga became tale of the toa or something of the toa quest matoran for the adventures toa the quest for the toa right See, so it's more like the quest for the Toa Stones, but I mean, whatever. That's fine. I think this is going to be a really interesting dynamic because you are a, you you have said that you have not grown up with Bionicle. You didn't like pay attention to not it when, at all, right. not at all. I I saw I was I was like, I was in the target demographic, but I was kind of on the upper end of it. And when mm -hmm. it when it launched, and I saw them, and I was like, that's like the goofiest thing I've ever seen. 
<laughs> it's like this, <laughs> it's so silly. Um, do you remember yeah, was like right. about how old you were when you were kind of aware of Bionicle existing in the background? Uh, well, yeah, I I I legitimately remember. I remember seeing uh, slicers or th or throwbots. Like I okay. never had one, but I saw them, and I thought, like, why is Lego making <laughs> ele elemental like action figures that are like, no, they weren't cars. Um, and mm -hmm. and then I think I saw Bionicle, and I was like, oh, they did they did some more of those goofy things. <laughs> and right. I would have been like twelve. I would have been like twelve years old or so. Of course. But uh, yeah, something like that. I think it's really interesting that you know because you've gotten into it very recently. Um, and you've been researching specifically for the video. At this time, you have already read all of the books, right? The written material. I I just finished like this week. I finished reading uh like the the yesterday quest, and that was like of course that was the last uh, that was the last one, and now mm -hmm. I'm done. Yeah. Right. And also, what uh, what other stuff have you been consuming in preparation? Because I know you've read the comics as well. I read all the comics. I read all of the books. Including the level three readers, of course. Of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I read, yeah, all the all the books, all the serials, you know, like all all the prose uh, stuff. Uh, okay, the many deaths of Toa Tuyet is not a serial per se. It was a short story, but you know, just just everything, pretty much every everything that was included in that one document by um, I think it's. Turaga Nuva on the right. BZ Power forums made that one like master document. I I I just I just printed it out. That one's called the Biological Chronicle, right? Yes, I believe okay. it's I believe it's called the Biological Chronicle. Yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, I, I have the I have the version without the comics in it because I had already read all the comics. Also, mm -hmm. I don't think it's quite comprehensive. I think there are some things that are not in there, but like it's got like 90, 99 percent of right. everything. So yeah, um, yeah. I read read all that. Read all the comics. Played all the games that are like worth playing. I think, <laughs> and I think that's pretty much it. I think that's pretty much everything. Uh, the movies. What about? Movies? Oh yeah. I mean, of course I watch. Of course I watch the movies. Yeah. <laughs> right. But you don't even. Have, but you don't even have to watch the movies because you can just read them in book form. Yes, but then how would you know about you know. Takua, that's Takua. like Takua. How would I know about the? How would I know about the Matoran's weird abdominal muscles? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because you, 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 what you have to understand is that 80% of the Bionicle fandom's uh, humor is just that word, Takua, yelled in that <laughs> specific way. See, I don't, I don't know any of like the memes. Yeah, so I, that... I, I, I found out that good, good guy is a meme, and I, I get that one. That Our Lord good. and Savior. I know about good guy. What other ones do I know about? Uh, I'm blanking. Nothing. I have no, I have no idea. Uh, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure I've heard a few more than that. Um, th there's, a, there's one that's very famous, and it's always oh, people, people calling Teradax Terry. I've Terry, heard people call him course. Terry. Uh, you know, silly. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, one of my favorite ones, which is a very normie one, is um, do you remember what the what the Ice Borax name is? He, so, I, w I was gonna say I, the that, Ice Borax is yeah. it is is it at the it, would it be like the Korok? Korok, yes. I think so. So the, uh... <laughs> I was gonna say that this is gonna be an interesting dynamic because you weren't aware of Ionicle and you've been researching it heavily recently. Mm. I have been... I grew up with Bionicle. I was super into it when I was a kid. Uh, mm. And then, you know, got into the community after it already imploded, basically. Right. Uh, but like, po like post G2? Right. Yeah, basically. In the middle of G2 um, okay. is, is when I started interacting, basically. Uh, but the, the funny thing is, you would probably know a lot more than, than I do just from my recollections from, you know, actually being in... Uh, maybe about, like, the nitty-gritty of, like, the mm -hmm. books, yeah, per perhaps. Right, because one of the big things about the... Um, being in the Bionicle community is that a lot of the interactions are just people who had like one or two of the toys as a kid yeah. and then finding out, oh wait, this is like, has a huge 
lore wait, there were books. Wait, there were books? Exactly. Like, wait, there was a there was a fourth movie? <laughs> One of my uh, favorite yeah. memes that that you are apparently not aware of is "quote unquote" the red one, because I, okay, okay, I know what that is because I watched that I watched that one iceberg video. Okay, there's an iceberg uh, video. There is at least one iceberg video about Bionicle, and it was kind of interesting, and it mentioned the red one. Yeah, so I know what you're talking about. All right, and do. You, Okay, so another one. Do you know about "quote unquote" the dream? Uh, you're gonna have to no. So "quote unquote" the dream is this really weird, like mass psychological phenomena, where basically every Bionicle fan ever has had at least one dream in their lifetime, where like <laughs> they are in a, they're just in a store. And in the store, they just have, like, brand new Bionicles. <laughs> and that's it. That's the dream, basically. Like, there's new, there's a new set of Bionicles in yes. the store. Yes, or, okay. like, just you are in, in the store and, you know, maybe in the dream you're, you're just, you know, doing your groceries or something. And then you come across an aisle and it's like, oh, crap, <laughs> you know, it's all the sets I never had as a kid. All the sets that I, that I uh, had or okay. something like that. Have, have, you had a, have you had a dream like that? I've had at least... Th- three versions of the dream (laughs) i find it interesting that it's that it's dreams about not about like the story of bionicle but about buying bionicle yes it's always specifically shopping for bionicle yeah shopping for bionicle that's very interesting yes so one of them i had it it was just like one aspect of like a a larger dream but one of the bits was that you know it's like hanging out with friends and it was raining outside so we went into a store to hide to hide from the mm. rain and in the mm-hmm. store was just like wall to wall bionicles <laughs> another <laughs> one i've had is that i i, I was in like a, an anime convention or something like that and it, but instead of like booths where they sold stuff there were like tents that you would go inside of <laughs> and awesome. that, that, there was just a tent that had uh, new bionicles amazing i i wish i was th- i wish i'd been there yeah it, i it, i have <laughs> i have never I'm gonna. I gotta level with you. Mm-hmm. I've never even seen a Bionicle like in real life. I've never even like seen <laughs> or touched one. Not <laughs> even as a kid. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. I don't remember any like friend of mine ever having one or showing mm-hmm. me one or 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 I maybe I saw one in like a store somewhere by yeah. accident. Because I feel uh, like yeah. the thing is, I feel like you know Bionicle. If you didn't have the like exact type of autism as a kid. <laughs> You, I, it, it would just be, it would like kind of bounce off you, or you'd just be like, okay, yeah, this is cool, and then you'd grow I, out I, of it. I, maybe, maybe I was a little too old, or I mean, I was like, I was into like, I played with Legos when I was like little, but I never made the jump to like building with Technics and mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, so I was kind of out of my Lego phase, and I was into like reading i was into like fantasy i was like reading lord of the rings around Mm -hmm. that time so yeah it just it just didn't just didn't grab my attention very much one sec i need to grab a beverage give me like it's fine literally a single second okay i'm back welcome back what are you drinking uh kirkland signature sparkling okay it's not sparkling water it's just sparkling uh black raspberry flavor wow nice it's, so if, it, it's, if it's not sparkling water, is it just soda? <laughs> it's just, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's called sparkling. Nice. But yeah, the, um, you know, we, we've taken like five detours off the thing that I wanted to say. One of oh, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite Bionicle memes is, um, like Korok. There, there is this ancient post from Facebook that I will send to you right now. Um, okay. it's from like some Facebook RP group <laughs> and it's just people like, um, like Are RPing young? and then a someone vampire. interjects. <laughs> oh, walk do you want to read it? A young vampire girl walk around alone and feel like people don't like her because she is different. Walks by and bumps into her on accident. Oh, I'm so sorry. Look at him and her eyes are blood red. It okay. Smiles. I like your eyes. They're pretty. Thank you. Smiles. A robot appears from a portal. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. This purple guy. This purple guy knows what's up. Uh, f- 
funny? You know what I learned? You know what mm-hmm. I learned about the Borok that I thought was interesting that I learned from the Faber files? Was that in, the, in, devel- in development, you know what they were called? You know what they called them in development? I do not know, actually. I have not watched the Faber files. Bugs. Bugs. They just called them the bugs. Uh, or like Faber's documents, too, anyway. And you know what they called mm-hmm. the Krana? What? The Krana? Krana? Power brains. Power brains? Yes, the bugs with their power brains. That is, you know, that's very descriptive. I feel like it is very European I, I think, of him. <laughs> I, th- I think that's that's just how they were conceiving of them, and then they they pitched it to the suits, and they were like, we got to think of better names for this. We can't sell them as power brains. You know, lo- love the design, love the idea and all, but like we'll workshop it. Yeah, and that's actually interesting because, you know, you have not been looking into G2 because it's a completely separate thing. No, I don't know anything about G2. So one of the things that happened with G2 that some people are upset about or were mm-hmm. upset about at the time is that ba- basically that's how they handled the villains. They didn't have specific names like Korok and instead, you know, were not as specific as, you know, bugs, <laughs> but mm. they, they had like Skull Crusher, Skull Archer, Skull You whatever. know, I, I genuinely feel like the um the naming conventions like are kind of a big barrier to entry mm-hmm. for understanding because like for understanding the story at least i i still couldn't tell you like which one is the rope rack and which one is the bogger rack and which one is the una rack like who who cares nobody knows uh yeah um um so i kind of think naming them s- stuff that's a little bit more simple and evocative like that i get why they don't want mm-hmm. to name things Makuta and <laughs> and Tapura. Like, who are these people? <laughs> these names don't mean anything. Funnily enough, funnily enough, Makuta did come back as a name in G2. Okay, well, I mean, <laughs> you can have, like, one. You can have, yeah. like, one guy with a fancy name. He's the bad guy. Exactly, because, yeah, they... Without getting but, but too you, much but you can't. It. But you can't give every freaking mook their own, like, stupid... Their, st- their own stupid... <laughs> gobbledygook name it doesn't <laughs> and i'm not that's not about maori okay unarak is not a maori i mean i think i'm saying it i'm saying it wrong that's not what i'm saying yeah you you get what i'm, you get what I'm saying I absolutely <laughs> yeah, you're saying i you just get what i'm saying I, I like the instant uh defense against xenophobia <laughs> not saying that Ma- i'm not calling maori gobbledygook do not <laughs> Put in the newspaper that I called it gobbledygook. That's that's the quote that I'm gonna put on the thumbnail. <laughs> mm. Oh man! All right, but... we're off to a great we're off to a great start. Um, yes, we are. So yeah, yeah. We um, I actually wanted to talk to you about like the lectures in general before even getting into Bionicle, but you know it's been so fun. Yeah. So <clears throat> first of all, you know these lectures. I've always been curious. Did did you invent the whole lecture format, or did you get it from somewhere? It was an idea. Well, you know, you know about Radcon, of course. It was it was just an idea that just got tossed around at uh, at the first Radcon. Someone, I, I think I was. It was. It's it's such an. It's such an ugly topic now, but you know, I was talking about uh, Sonichu stuff. I was talking about how funny the story of Sonichu is. Yeah, because and at the Sonichu... time, it was it was a very different landscape. I still think Sonichu. it's. I still think the story of Sonichu is funny. I, I. It is. I'm. It's a. I'm a bit like. It's a bit of a of a of a. What's the word? A double edged sword to be associated with that now, but like it's like I always say. I always get comments about like, oh, when's when's um uh what's the phrase uh when's christery 103 and i'm like first Why? of all <laughs> and, and i'm like did you, the name of the video is sonichu 101 yes. it's not christery 101 it's sonichu it's about the story of the comics and yes i do touch on on the author uh probably more than i should have honestly <laughs> but it's about the story of the comics um of course. A- anyway i just had to and yeah that that is how i, I found to... out about anyway you. anyway Yes, I, I, that's my biggest video. Uh, mm-hmm. It's probably how a lot of people found me. Uh, so, you know, someone... I was just talking about how funny the story of Sonichu is at Radcon, and someone was just like, you should you should give a lecture on this. And I was like, you know, and you know, Radcon, we were all just 
filming stuff. We were all just putting uh-huh. stuff together and doing projects. And it was like, why don't we film? Why don't we film you giving a light? I was like, okay. And then I just did it. Uh, and it made a, got a million views. Um, of course. So, you know. It's lightning in a bottle. You love to see it because <laughs> you've basi- yeah. you basically inspired a bunch of other people to do similar things because I know there is there is already a Bionicle lecture like to a live audience. I watched like five I, minutes of it. Uh, wasn't very wait, good. <laughs> so. It's not it's not to a live audience. It's to that one girl, right? You don't. I, you're talking about you're talking about the one by that one guy, and it's in like a Skype call with that one girl. No, right? No, no. Talking there about a different one. one? That there is one. That, that one is that one is infamous in my personal mind. <laughs> that that guy, I have a very very bad feelings about that guy. Uh, but anyway, no. The, I remember. I, I may be misremembering because this happened a bit ago. Like I clicked on it when it came out, and I was like, "What is this?" And I clicked off. But it was like some dudes in a living room explaining it to their family like i think their parents were oh there? well i haven't i have not seen that one i'm trying to find it but i'm not finding it you know on a on a yeah. on a on a different um this is not exactly related but mm-hmm. uh like before i released the Mega Man video i which was you know the last one i did was the Mega Man one which was like seven months ago or something uh i looked on youtube and somebody else had done a Mega Man lore lecture like a year before really? yeah and it's it's just a guy standing in he's in front of like a projector screen and he's mm-hmm. talking to a live audience. It it didn't get a whole lot of traction. I mean, I think my delivery was better, and his was not edited. Mine mine was oh. like, yeah. mine was more edited. Uh, so you know, there were I'm... qualitative differences, but like, yeah. Yeah, I've people, always people, been a, a strong believer. People have done similar things. Yeah, a strong yeah. believer in the in, power in of the, editing. The power of editing. Yes, the old yes. the old Lime Dragon episodes were like extremely heavily edited in the audio like i would literally pace conversations in the edit for a podcast and it worked mm. out pretty well <laughs> mm. Mm. yeah um anyway what were we talking about we were talking about um coming out with with the lecture stuff and that you know other oh, people yeah. were have done similar things like the My... linkara lecture i think is a kind yes of a Te- tectonic improvs linkara lecture is i think because you know the Radcon was with uh, the old the old PCP crew and a bunch of the other PCP people. The Linkara one by Tectonic Improv is it's the only one that I've seen that's like directly inspired that I, I that I have. I think it's the only one I've really watched, uh, but mm-hmm. it's good. Um, yeah, yeah. And then I did I did a couple more. I wish I'd done even more back then. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, because but, I yeah. love almost all of the uh, the ones from those days. You know, yeah. rest in peace, Mo- Munchie. So, some of them are some of them are better than others, but yeah, in some general, of them are I definitely think. better than some others. Are not, they're not all amazing. <laughs> some <laughs> of them are have their issues. But yeah, um, yeah. We, one of the things that I loved about the original lecture format was the you know the live reactions, and right now, you, the yeah. way you're doing them is different. It's you know you uh, talking to the camera. In more of a, you, know, you mentioned Mike's Mike as an inspiration during the Mega Man yes. lecture. Which... Mike's Mike, uh, his video about um, um, not not um, not Glee. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh, the one about the the Scarlet Letter. The uh, Pretty Little Liars. That's Pretty Little funny. Liars, yes, the Pretty Little Liars. That one was kind of an inspiration. Um, mm-hmm. The the live audience. Uh, some people say they miss the live audience. I have gone back and I have watched those old ones, and I gotta say, sometimes the live audience is funny and and they their interactions can be engaging. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're really annoying. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're <laughs> annoying as often as they are funny, and so I kind of don't. Sometimes they have their charm. I'm not gonna mm-hmm. say there's no there's no value there, uh, yeah. but overall, I think it's better to dispense with it just mm-hmm. for the sake of making a good video. Do you uh, do you think annoying as the lecture or as the audience? Like, uh, you know, me watching that on a YouTube. I mean, video. it's no. I think I think as a viewer, mm-hmm. I was I went back and I tried watching some of the old ones, and now I'm thinking like a lot of the time when the audience pipes up, I'm kind of just like shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. not always. Some sometimes sometimes they're funny. Sometimes they're not so funny. 
Um, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. It, it's a mixed bag, and oh. the you know I don't hang out with those guys anymore anyway. So <laughs> it's not like it's not like I have a choice to make about whether mm-hmm. I uh, have a live audience or not. Uh, yeah, I'll I, have you know. I can't, but it's okay. But I think it's okay. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it's I think it's a lateral move. Right, that's of course. My, that's I, my because take on that. yeah, the, the the format is basically completely different now. But I'll have you know, you're you're kind of vindicated yeah. in that because by yeah. the when the um, Rodcon four lectures were coming out, I was like showing them to my friends, mm-hmm. and they they would enjoy them. Um, but I, I have this one specific friend that who was supposed to be here, um, but he isn't mm-hmm. uh, because fuck you. <laughs> um, right. Of course, but um. <laughs> he was the one who who talked to me most about them, and the the funny thing was, a lot of the time was like, he would, I would just get a, receive a message out of the blue, and it's like, dude, who the fuck is this guy asking questions in the audience? Why does he keep Some, talking? I think sometimes the questions could be annoying. Sometimes they were a little bit annoying. I don't know. Um, yeah, the the. There were some jokes. There were some memes spawned from some of the from some of the banter, and you know that's all cool and all. Mm-hmm. I I actually my my goal uh, lately I, I haven't actually gotten around to filming the the Bionicle one yet. I'm planning on filming it like pretty soon, mm-hmm. and recently I'm thinking like I you know it's all well and good to be like oh my god the Mega Man video that eight hour Mega Man video that you, you hear about a guy made an eight hour Mega Man video that's so long. And like, yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of sort of generates a little bit of like shock. It's like, why would why is it eight hours long? Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like that effect is only going to become less pronounced. People are going to be less and less impressed by like really long videos because they're they've been a thing for a while now. They have. So been. I think with yeah. so I think with the Bionicle one, I'm like it's still going to be long, but I'm not going to I'm not going to try and pad it out. I'm really going to try and make it. Not concise, but like as concise as such a as such a large volume of material can be, and I and I feel like yeah. if it ends up being like maybe four or five hours instead of eight, I kind of think it might be a better video for it. And I, would agree. I think, and I think that I have I have plans for like what I'm going to be doing. I have some ideas for like uh, some slightly more involve like like drawings and like stuff on the board and diagrams Mm -hmm. and i think that's gonna add a lot i think it's gonna be really fun uh be exciting yeah Yeah. feels very uh you know online professor zoom type shit and 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 i'm yes but i'm going to do it in a way that is is um it's actually going to be focused on like really like conveying idea to the audience, to the viewer at home, mm-hmm. in a way that I think that a live audience would only distract from. So I'm gonna try and lean into the yeah. like, this is the, this is a direct correspondence between me, the lecture, the presenter, and you, the audience, and I'm mm-hmm. and I'm just conveying information directly to you, uh, for maximum impact. That's that's I think yeah. where I'm so, at with it right now. Yeah. So the thing with Bionicle, I think would. I don't think it would work well with a live audience as well because there's so many the the name okay. barrier. As the you, the as one you said. the name barrier is tough. The name barrier is tough, but I I do think the big I think the ah. big twist would go over really well with a live audience. Yeah. I think that I think that that that's the one thing I'm gonna miss out on the big reveal. There's not gonna be anyone yeah. to scream like, "Oh my god." <laughs> no, no Cheeto Man moment you, in this one. Yeah. Do you do you know another thing from the Faber files? Do you know what Christian Faber? Well, context. Christian Faber and some of like the higher ups would when they were in story meetings, they would have to talk about the story and their ideas for the story. And then when they wanted to communicate it, they would talk to their underlings, but they didn't want their underlings to know the twist because they didn't want the the twist to be known by like any more people than strictly necessary. Mm -hmm. So do you know what they called the big twist uh, when they were talking about it in front of other people? What what did they call? I do not know this. They called it, they referred to it as the, as Bionicle's big story engine. Wow. Okay. The big, yeah, the big story engine. And of course they meant the spirit robot, but Perfect they never course. called it that. Yeah. <laughs> the thing, and the thing, and I think that's a really apt name for it because it is big. It and is it a is a machine engine. like an engine. And it is also, yeah, it's the engine of the story. It's the thing driving the plot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, 
I like that. Yeah. And yeah, I actually wanted to ask you in the lecture, are you going to be, how much are you going to be covering of like the backgrounds of the creative stuff like Christian Faber, Alistair Swinnington, George Farsi, Greg Farsi is what I meant to say. Um, I mean, I'll, I'm mostly going to be focusing on the, like the, the, the in canon lore of it. Like I'll, I'll mention, I'll mention Greg Farsi. You kind of, you have to talk about Greg because a lot of like the lore comes from like you know BZ Power users like just asking him stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, you kind of have to, and I'll and I'll probably mention Christian Faber and like how the idea spawned from like he had a brain tumor and he had to take these pills and he thought what if there was a little soldier in my pills? Like what a, what a cute freaking <laughs> story. Uh, but it's not I'm not gonna focus that much on it. Okay, yeah, makes sense because just yeah. like the like the. Sonny Chu one. It's a Sonny Chu lecture. It's a Bionicle lecture. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not about. I mean, there's already that really great video from Slow Start. That's like mm. sort of the business history of Bionicle. Um, I found that really interesting. Uh, so I I'm not gonna devote a whole section to being like in the year 2000, Nintendo was struggling financially, <laughs> and they you know <laughs> that that's not what I'm what we're here to talk about. Yeah, because. It's funny, a lot of Bionicle stuff always, th there's always that, like, little tidbit I'll, of, I'll like, probably mention it, I'll probably mention it, mm. but, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna assume that the audience knows everything about the context in which Bionicle exists, but mm -hmm. nothing at all about the story <laughs> itself. Well, the good thing is, it, it, like, the context doesn't really matter for Bionicle, so uh, you'd be fine, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, um I, I am I am gonna assume like a non fan. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm not I'm not I'm gonna make the video Yeah, ass assuming that like it's not I mean I assume that probably Bionicle fans will watch it, but I'm gonna make it as like show this to someone who doesn't know about Bionicle and they and they will and they will be educated on the entire like Bionicle mm -hmm. storyline. Um yeah, so I'm gonna assume no familiarity. Also, I just think that'll give it a wider, give it a wider reach. Absolutely, uh, because yeah, the the whole thing. You know, I was mentioning the meme, the the red one, is um, most people who have interacted with Bionicle in their lives, they just did it casually, like they didn't have absolutely yeah. no idea. So yeah, they just had a they just had a toy. Yeah, and Bionicle fans will consume anything Bionicle, so you're good on right. both fronts. <laughs> right. Nice, nice, locked in. Um, I think it's going to be really good. I think it has, you know, one of my previous ones, my favorite lecture that I did is the one that has the least views. It's the one about uh, uh, Jennifer Diane Wrights and the, oh, uh, frick, what's her, uh, 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 Pastel Defender Heliotrope. You seen that one? That is my favorite one. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, I have seen that yeah, one. Yeah, that's my favorite one. And I feel like the Bionicle, like, lore and all the twists in it and stuff it, it kind of feels like explaining that a little bit it's like oh the mm. Trisselmeistanian like world plates and the oh yeah the, 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 the dome the shadow storm oh yeah domed cities under the under the earth like connected by rivers mm. and like the great barrier energized protodermis uh you know it kind of feels like that which is really fun mm -hmm. I, I like that stuff yeah a lot so, of like specific like, how does the world work no yeah parallels between i remember i was i was so surprised like i i knew that there was i had been informed that there was lore because mm -hmm. like i knew that there was you know that other guy the other freaking guy who i'm not a fan <laughs> of uh made that one like five hour video about it mm -hmm. uh and uh so I knew that there was like a lot to say, but I didn't know any of the details. And then when I dug into it, I was like, huh, wow, that's, that's crazy. Um, there's just a lot of like big ideas, like big mm -hmm. concepts in there that, uh, re reveal themselves very late in the game. Just very ambitious, very ambitious to have such like big twists that like don't even really get that hinted at. You can, you can see them in hindsight. Mm -hmm. But like at the time, like you would never, you would never guess it. Do you know another tidbit from the Faber Files? Um, there was a plan 
at some point in development, uh, when they when they first like uh, awoke the Borok, mm-hmm. one they were gonna like basically like I don't know turn a key or whatever, and they were gonna try and turn on Matanui, but it wouldn't work. There's something would go wrong, but he would sort of like somewhat activate him a little bit, and his his fingers would twitch, and three of his fingers would like stick up from the waterline, like and he would be like visible on the horizon. And they'd be like, oh, we got to go to those. Oh, there's three new islands just appeared. We got to go to these three new islands. And like, that's the new adventure site for the next uh, season. Three Finger Island. That was going to be a thing. really cool. And then they didn't. It was really cool. They didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of um, could have been in Bionicle, like the dinosaur planet or whatever it was before it got canceled. I'm sorry, dinosaur planet? So uh, have you, haven't you mentioned this? There was like a. No. I don't know. So, what you... when when Bionicle got cancelled, you know, when they got into the Glatorian stuff, their design documents of like mm. dinosaur Bionicles and stuff like that. Oh. Uh, I really <laughs> wish I had more knowledge about this off, my, off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, there, there's design co- documents that you can find about you, what the plans were for. Uh, what 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 was going to happen after like Mata Nui defeated Makuta? I know that um, they were at one point the sagas were labeled as books, and mm-hmm. um, like I think I think the defeat, yeah, like like uh, Mata Nui on Spherus Magna, it was like book like five I think out of seven. So there were going to be like yeah, yeah. there were going to be two two more entire books. I've heard people say that it, that the fir- the fourth movie was the first of what was planned to be a second trilogy. I'm yes. not sure if is that confirmed. I don't know if it is, but I... I've heard a lot of people say mm-hmm. it. I'm I'm not sure what the source on that is, but I I do know that there were going to be yeah, that was that was book four of seven or book five of seven. So there was going to be a book six and a book seven, and maybe there would have been another movie for each of those quote unquote books, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I. Um, there's a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's how I feel about a lot of Bionicle, if we're being honest. Right. <laughs> sure. Sure. A lot oh, of nonsense. A lot of nonsense. A lot of nonsense. A lot of nonsense. Some of my favorite. Some of my favorite parts are the parts where you can tell, like, okay, <laughs> oh yeah, um, Greg just had to include something like a toy. Be- be- yeah, Greg. Greg had. Greg had to call the gun a certain name because they told him the greg the gun is named this and you got to come up with an explanation for why it's named that and he was just it like means okay. despair <laughs> um the my favorite one is um because the the i think it's the jetrax t6 mm-hmm. uh the the sweet motorcycle it had a um it had a yellow like special edition yeah. so there's just one line about when antros like takes off in the jet tracks he like bumps into a light stone and it like glows yellow for a second <laughs> just, to, just to justify the special edition i had no idea about it i knew about the special edition but i didn't know they justified there's, it there's just one that he's like oh he, he bumps into a light and it glows yellow okay and then the chase begins <laughs> Yeah, I know. There's there's a lot of that because yeah. I, most people know Bionicle. The toys came first, and then they adapted the story around the toys. Yes, so you had to come I, up with like, oh, this is you know the original Toa Nua, but why do they look like that now? Oh, adaptive what, armor. Was it you that recommended me that um, that YouTube channel of that one guy who like worked on the toys for a second, Brian Ellis? There, I did not had, recommend he, it, but you oh, you, you have mentioned rec- it on the stream. Yes. Yeah, so, someone recommended it to to me, and it's a guy. He worked on some of the toys, and yeah, he he would just he he would design the toys. Like he had he designed um the Mari Nui, the Toa Mari Nui Paru, mm-hmm. for instance, and he didn't know like the guy's name or anything. They were just like, <laughs> "Hey guys, hey t- toy team, okay, design some new Bionicles. Uh, they're underwater this time." And he was just like, okay, I'll do the black one. And then he did. <laughs> and that's and that's how they made Nuparu. That's great. Yeah, and, and I assume it was just left to Greg. And Greg was like, oh, okay, well, this is Nuparu. Yeah, that's that's him. We're sti- <laughs> we're sticking with Nuparu. Yeah. What about the old Paru? <laughs> <laughs> the old Paru had a mohawk. <laughs> a mohawk? Yeah, the uh Nuparu Inika. He has like spikes in the middle of his head. Does he? In the mask. 
Yeah, that's, yeah, that's maybe. Like a meme. Yeah, maybe you're right. I can't remember what his mask looks like. Right. It's, it's kind of like Mohawk apart. It's like really forgettable somehow. Yeah. Oh but, no, I think I know. I know the mask. The like weird, like grinning. He's got like a weird, like grinning face. He does. Yeah, that's not my. Those are not my favorite masks. Yeah, which is a, a shame because that that actually is my my favorite year from Bionicle. I know it's people usually dislike them because of the masks are giant I'm a big, and gross. I'm a big Paraka fan. Paraka are amazing. I love. I'm them. a I'm a big Paraka lover. Yeah, for sure. Have you watched the commercials yet? Yeah. Great. So now now you've been blessed by Yo Yo Paraka. Yo Paraka, the bully. The Beast, The Trigger, The Tracer, The Drifter, and The Snake. Yeah. Oh, you got them got all. It. I yeah. wouldn't have been able to get them all. <laughs> I would have remembered like a few of them. They don't even, they don't even, they don't even really make sense, honestly. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Why is Vezon the Beast? I don't, he's, they're, <laughs> they're all pretty much the same. <laughs> Yeah. Well, because he's he's crazier because he got is he the other I, guy oh, yeah. <laughs> split from the, on, the from only him. one the only one that really makes sense to me is Avac being the trigger because he does make the guns so like that one mm -hmm. that one's fine yeah no, it's that. funny that you know they're all snakes they're all bullies <laughs> it's etc yeah yeah it's funny that the the marketing quote unquote story. Would just be like loosely, very loosely related to like the actual marketing, like you know the um, the whole two thousand four year with Metronui and the um, dystopian aspect of the Vaki. Yeah, we've, we've talked about this, and then the story is it doesn't really come up that much, right? No, no I mean, well, it's it's just the it's just the way that the, that. They talk about Metronui as the city of legends and like, oh, we got to get back to our homeland. But yeah, then in the books, you don't really get it because because they don't really encounter the Vaki that much until they become the Toa. But even before that, they're, whenever the Vaki get mentioned, they're like, avoid them. Like, they're bad. They're a menace. Like, they'll ruin your day. <laughs> uh, they don't they don't do anything good. Uh, and yeah, and then the animations paint an even more dystopian picture. It's it's as though like it is like a 1984, a dystopia, but it just so happens that the Matoran just love working so much that they don't really mind living <laughs> under the heel of these robots that force them to work all the time because like they want to work anyway. Um, <laughs> how how conservative of them? <laughs> yeah, how it's just fortunate, just fortunate that it worked out that way. Why do they even? The, why do they even have to build them in the first place? <laughs> hey, thanks, New Paru. Thanks, New Paru, for making these um these nineteen eighty four cops robot cops. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> yeah, but hey, he's my goat. I love New Paru for some reason. I just think he's cool. He he's cool. He's cooler as a Matoran. He's cooler as a he's oh, cooler as a diminished Matoran on Matanui making the box or out of the out of the the uh, the Borok. That's legendary move. Making the Vaki not <laughs> such a legendary move. I love Nuparu. A little, little bit cringe, honestly. He, because he's kind of like I don't want to say like Mary Sue because that's not right, but it is weird that they had all these like established Matoran. And then out of nowhere, they add Nuparu, and it's like, hey, this guy is going to create the the, bo the box or it is, it is kind of weird that he, he seems, like, almost single-handedly responsible for, like, every technological <laughs> advance that you even hear about. Of course. I mean, just the, one, the ones you do hear about, he did them. Yeah. Yeah, because he, it's, he is it's the wacky. inventor that we know about, so he has to do everything. <laughs> I know. I know. It's very... So, one you thing can't I, have a second inventor. Of course. Yeah. One thing I wanted to ask you about nearly an hour into this is why Bionicle? Because as you've said, you didn't grow up with it. So why Bionicle out of anything um, that you could do about? I mean, people were, you know, after the Mega Man video, a lot of people suggested things for me to do and you know a lot of them recommended other like video game franchises but one of the more common 
things that people would say. It was like, hey, you should do one about Bionicle. And I was like, really? Um, is, the, is, there, is there lore? And then I found out, yes, there is. And then, you know, I, w I, wanted, I was going to do, I still am going to do like a follow up to the Mega Man video about, yes. um, <laughs> yeah, about, I'm going to, I'm going to do the one about um, uh, Battle Network, mm -hmm. but it's taking a really long time to play out those games because they're really long. So I was kind of like, well, crud, I got to think of something else. I got to do something else in the meantime. And I was just thinking like, what else can I do? What else can I do? And I just remembered that a lot of people had said Bionicle. I was like, I'll just, I'll, I'll just look into Bionicle. Let me just, <laughs> let me just take a look and see what's going on there. And I looked, and I was like, oh wow, there's a whole. That's weird. I just Ca found it really weird. Weird. Casual and stroll into a ten-year franchise. Yeah, I just looked. I was like, whoa, this is freaky. And then my my pal, my pal Simsy, he said, I was like, what is going on here? This doesn't make any sense. And he said, Ben, just, just, just go. Google, acquaint yourself with the the Matoran universe. Just look up a wiki entry on the Matoran universe. I was like, okay. And then I looked at the map. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is this would make a pretty good. This is a pretty good subject. And then I spent the next like two months reading it is like all, all the books and stuff. Such the Matoran universe is such an interesting idea because it's like it, it really what, is. What if there's like a whole. Not just one, but multiple civilizations just living inside a dude for no discernible reason <laughs> other than shits and giggles. Yeah, what what are this what are the Skakti there to do? <laughs> exactly. The great beings in all their wisdom decided there should be some barbarians <laughs> just living <laughs> in this dude's like left shoulder or something. Uh, uh, duh. I want honestly. Sometimes I wonder if maybe like the other species just like evolved sort of accidentally. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone just put them together and they just like started replicating. Like maybe they weren't supposed to be other things. Mm -hmm. But I don't think so. I, I think that's very headcanon, and I think it's probably stated oh. that like no, everything's a hundred thousand years old. Every creature in the Matoran universe is a hundred thousand years old. I found a quote from Greg saying that apparently, and this was crazy, the Matoran on Matanui could not reproduce, but when they go back to Metronui, they can, they can make new Matoran now. So they got to get ready for that. This is going to be like a cultural shift. And I was like, what? That is insane you to can't, just add. You can't, you can't, you can't be serious. I don't know. <laughs> they, ne they never like, they never really follow up on it because, you know, nothing... They never get a, really get the chance to just like live in Metronui. But no, he he said that somewhere in the forums. He re replied to someone's question. He said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can make new Matoran now in Metronui, which is wild." Yeah, don't so you maybe, love? Yeah, <laughs> don't you love having like gigantic like society shifting <laughs> changes implications made in forum posts? Yeah. It's it's annoying, and I feel kind of bad that I haven't read all of the far uh, not the Farshti files. Well, you, you could call them that, I guess. <laughs> um, I haven't read all of the Farshti posts because most of them are not that interesting. But then every mm -hmm. like once in a while, one is like a completely like just changes everything, and that <laughs> that's one of them. Yeah, uh, and it's funny. Yeah, I used to be uh, I used to work or be involved with this one Bionicle fan project. And mm. it was funny because one of the things they were doing was basically writing fan fiction, but right. they they wanted to write um, stories in in a way that would fit perfectly with canon, and so basically they had at least one guy dedicated just to like searching through the Greg archives to see <laughs> would well, this contradict anything. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's new, but like the ones they got on the Great Greg archives, they're they're like searchable now. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe they were like that before. Um, but it's it's a, I know it's an ongoing project, mm -hmm. uh, and I've really impressed, really impressed by like how carefully like archived everything is. It's it's yeah. all it's really cool actually. Yeah, uh, and those archival efforts, aside yeah. from Biomedia Project, have been very recent. Uh, I see. Yeah, great. Uh, the Great Archives is relatively recent. And, you know, Biomedia has been around for ages and ages, and they've been documenting other stuff. But, yeah, 
for many, many years, when I got into the Bionicle community, it, you, if you wanted to read the books, you would have to, like, well, there was a blog on Tumblr that just, they, they just took photos, like, with their phone uh, or something of all yeah. the books, and that's how you had I to read it. I think I downloaded a uh, like a PDF that was just yeah a, a bunch of like photographs of the book. Yeah. I mean a lot of the a lot of the guidebooks that I got are just that. And some of them are scans, but some of them are just just photographs, which is just fine. If you just want to read what mm -hmm. it says, yeah, still it's appreciated. Funny. Yeah. I another pr ill-fated project that I was involved with was basically doing what the biological chronicle ended up doing of just like transcribing all of those photos into, you know, text form. Mm. But one of the things that, that we were attempting to do was, was just like add things, <laughs> which I know you're not a fan of. Someone. Um, okay. I, someone in my stream told me that, uh, apparently the, 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 I think it's tales of the Toa. The ending in the Biological Chronicle is the is the Farshti version, which is just a rewrite. The real book has they have to battle the the shadow the shadow Toa, but the the version in there is like what what Farshti said he would have written, which is that um you know they they have to they accept the darkness inside of them, and Damn. you know you can you can you can I mean you. I also think it's kind of lame, but that's not the point. The point is that that's not what was in the book. Right. Yeah, it's... Uh... That's, really just, that's just fake. <laughs> it's fake. Yeah. And... Um, yeah. But what I was getting at is I find it really interesting, and I don't know if you've noticed this in your research yet, the Bionicle fandom has this really, like, maniacal fixation on fixing things or adding things or... Yeah, like fixing um, things is is what I've seen the most. I don't know if you've. Uh... You mean, I mean that's the one that I've noticed. Um, that I think that's the only one I've really noticed. And there's just what, a lot I mean, of of what like. What else? Um, well, I'll give you one. The, yeah. They they found a you know that one uh, Bionicle game from 2001 that was unfinished. Uh, and now people are uh, fixing oh, it. Oh <laughs> yeah. You mean the one that. Just the one that's just like Matanui, or I, I don't know if it even had a name. I think it was, the one that was just the first year. Yeah, yeah. it was. A, it was supposed to come out in two thousand one. They got like really yeah. far into development, and then they just never finished it. There's a story behind it. There's a YouTube video about it. I, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but yeah, now people yeah found the like the builds for it, and a whole lot of dudes overnight just went like, "Well, I'm learning game development now to finish this." I mean that that makes sense because like yeah I've I've seen I haven't played the like reconstructed version of it but I mean I guess like it's if it mostly works like yeah, yeah. fix 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 the game I guess if you <laughs> if you can and like make it playable like that's cool yeah I guess I guess it's canon <laughs> I don't think it is I think there's like a lot of stuff in that game that no. is very not. <laughs> Uh, I guess no. Nah, the the purist in me says if it if it wasn't officially released, then it's not canon. I tend to agree with that. I am very. Yeah. I have a lot of very strong opinions about the whole Greg forum thing, which you yeah, have Greg, noticed. Greg is so. I, I I read like one of, like literally like the last post he ever made or like the second to last post is him doubling down on the idea that Matoran cannot love each other. They yes. can't love. It's, a, it's so it's such a stupid it's just a stupid thing to get hung up on um, oh no. the thing is he's so hung up over over that because people have been like we, <laughs> it's weird shipping Did not, he not, not even, like the ships not even shipping like people just got really hung up too on, on the fact that they can't like like well that doesn't make any sense mostly well, it, because it of, like, doesn't the it doesn't make any sense it it doesn't like yeah i get that they don't have sex and reproduce but like so what exactly. um they, they can freaking like, like each other you freaking idiot <laughs> god yeah oh man there's been yeah. like a lot of memes about that like you know yeah. the the classic meme of 
Is there somebody you forgot to ask? Like, I, I consent. Yes. I yeah. Don't. Is it is it Maku and Huki and Greg says, I don't consent? That's exactly what it is, yes. Of course it is, yeah, yeah. Do you think um do you think Holly and Jala had a thing? I think they had a thing. They definitely had a thing. If if it was yeah, just the okay. movie, it would, it would just be like, okay, I think you're kind of stretching. But the Borak animations make it kind of clear. The, even in the movie, I think even in the movie, which I watched before I watched those, I thought there was a little bit of like flirtiness with like mm -hmm. when they were on the the Coley field or whatever. Um, or was it no? Was it's not not Echo, not Eccolini. Yeah, it was the Coley field because they were on Matsunui. Um, yeah, and then in the in the in the in the animations, they're like, I like I like that because there's like. It humanizes them so much. It, well, yes, but but it specifically, I think it's cool that they they kind of contrast, uh, like Huki and and Maku. Like Huki oh, and Maku yeah. have this 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 adorable like like puppy like crush on each <laughs> other, whereas like Jala and ha ja Jala and Holly are just like, hmm, yes, yes, uh, I have uh, I feel uh, some affection for this uh, this individual. <laughs> I don't know. They're just they're just very like they're very buttoned up about it. Yeah, right. I just. You know, just different strokes for different folks, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Huki and what's her name? Maku. Maku. Yeah, they're, they're very cute. Huki is actually my favorite Bionicle for some reason. I just really like his Matoran set and then his 2006 set. So I, I just. Like, I like his him. big. I like his big um, Toamari mask. Oh, yeah. I like, like I like that one. Manta ray looking thing. Yes, yes, I think that one's pretty neat. I think that has been placed in many, like top ten worst Bionicle sets list because he doesn't have um, a hand. Does he not have a hand? He does not have a hand in like the blaster arm, I think. And then oh, he has like chain stangling that people don't like. Mm. You, you, people get hung I just up. Like, <laughs> I just like his big mask. I don't know. Exactly. Um, That's all. And you I mean, need. it's. Be Better, better. I mean, better than the, um, better than the Anika masks. The Anika masks were horrible. I'm sorry, they're so ugly. Uh, I, love uh, I love them. Uh, they're, my, they're my ugly babies. <laughs> uh, I don't like them. I don't like them. What's funny uh, is the only the only Anika I had as a kid was Huki, and then like the mask was completely ruined because my dog just chewed on it. <laughs> terrible. Clear this up for me. Um, the Anika are like much bigger than the the Toamata, right? Like the figures are just like twice as tall. Not twice, but they are considerably bigger. Yes. Okay. They they looked that way, and I wasn't sure. Which is like I, mm -hmm. they 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 sort of reference it in the in the book, like when when Takanuva when Takanuva shows up in Cardanui, I think Gali is like, wow, you got taller. And it's a joke about how, like, the old Takanuva figure was the size of the Toa Nuva, but, <laughs> like, the new one is, like, Inaika-sized or whatever. The new Takanuva uh, is actually bigger than that. Oh, so. okay. But I but I hate it. I, I really <laughs> hate I really hate to think that, like, in-universe, the, the Inaika are, like, 12 feet tall, and, like, the, uh, the, the Mata are just a, a, a measly 7 feet. Like, so, I think that's... It can't be true. So, no, in-universe, as far as I'm understanding with my years all re recollection about this, the Anika and the Nuva are the same size in-universe. I, I would think so. The reason Gali would say that is because by the time of Cardanui, the sets, Gali would also be Anika-sized, or rather Paraka-sized. Paraka are, like, a little bit shorter. Um, yeah, because she was... What Mystica or um, Mystica, Fantoka yes. or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, but the uh, Takanuva, so they all got bigger. The sets, yes. So yeah, that yeah. there was actually a lot of people get hung up about this you know, in the toy side of of things that the the original toys were better because of you know functions and then the and proportions mm -hmm. as well and the new ones mm -hmm. are the the Anika ones because basically what happened is that in the early years. Every couple of years, he would get a new, like a new base Toa build, basically. So you know the yeah. the Mata and the Nuva use the same base, then the Metro used a different base, and that was also shared by the Haga. 
then the mm-hmm. Hordika were their own thing. But by the time the Anika and the Paraka came about, everything after that is the same base build. So that's why people get get upset about that. Uh, because they are taller. Is, they're... is that is that true? Yes. I mean, I watched some not duck brick. I watched some oh. I watched some all out brick. I watched some all out brick reviews of the toys. And I mean in mm-hmm. those videos he, he doesn't I don't know. He he he's Maybe I was misinformed. I was listening to the wrong one. I thought he remarked that like no, they they keep they they could they they have they have new builds with each new uh, set or some. Maybe it's just like individual variation between the figures yes. within a set or something. Yeah. Yeah. The they're, only they're, yeah. they're not they're not all like the same body. They're not or the same are body. They? So, okay. um, uh, basically. There's the Piraka build and there's the Anika build, which are slightly different. The, the, the torso piece is different, basically. Mm. And there are exceptions. There are a few. I think the the Baraki are the biggest exception to this, where a few of mm. them have sort of unique builds in their torso. But mm-hmm. generally speaking, the 2008 and 2009 all used basically either the Piraka or the Anika build. Um, Kangu Wait. Mari is slightly different as well. Mm, okay, I'll I have I have to take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I believe sorry. you. Audience yelling at me because I'm probably misremembering something, <laughs> and that there might mm. be some some other thing I'm getting wrong. There's probably I'm sure there's exceptions, but yeah, yeah, gotcha. As a as a rough rule right um but okay. oh yeah takanuva takanuva in right in right so so why, like, i don't know did they did they all get bigger like why why would golly remark oh you got bigger because i don't know i find i found it very strange so the thing is everyone in the toys yes everyone got bigger in universe no the anika and the nuva are supposed to be the same size basically right takanuva specifically it, because he's he's a shadow toa now the set was titan sized so he was like a oh. lot bigger he was a lot bigger than the than the anika build and then the the mystica and the fantoka yes oh i see he's spe- he specifically is like a bigger set yes he is like okay. sized basically well that's freaking weird <laughs> <laughs> but okay i guess i guess that makes sense yeah i don't you know i never thought to look into like if in universe he actually changed sizes, but um, you would probably well, know better than me. I, I don't. I don't think so. Um, I mean, unless the, nobody. I mean, he turns into a sh- semi shadow Toa, but then he. I don't see why that would make him bigger. He doesn't like. He gets some new weapons, I think, in like the Kingdom yes. universe, uh, and then. Yeah, I can't really think of a good reason why he would get bigger. Uh, unless being a Shadow Toa just <laughs> makes you bigger. Which maybe yeah. it does. I don't know. Did you like then the he... um the alternate universe story stuff? Uh kinda. I li- I sort of liked I you know, I didn't really like the the Toa Empire. I kind of did like the Kingdom Empire. I thought it my favorite part of the Kingdom Empire is when Turaga Takanuva says that, like, yes, we're li- we're living on the I- island for now, but the universe is crumbling underneath us, and we won't be able to live here forever. And he says that um, Nuju and Nuparu are collaborating to build rocket ships to migrate into space. And it's I was like, ass. yes, that's so awesome because Nuparu is an engineer who knows how to build machines and Nuju is an astronomer who knows about space and the stars. And it's like, yes, they would collaborate to do that. <laughs> they are the guys. It's perfect. Um, I liked, I liked the, I liked the kingdom. Although I kind of thought that the like thing where they find um, Makuta Teradax and he's like, and they have Matoro like sacrifice himself again. I thought that was dumb. Never mind. So, never mind. I didn't like the kingdom. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one where where Matoro fails? Yes. Yes. Okay, the cool. the kingdom is the universe where Matoro fails and the universe dies. So 
everyone in the mo like yeah um everyone like the vor the vortex and the skakti and like every race bands together and comes together to live on this like beautiful they build like a super city on what on what used to be the island of mata nui mm -hmm. uh but everyone hate and it's great but everyone hates matoro anyway <laughs> Because you didn't save Matsunui, uh. Now we had to build this like paradise, uh. <laughs> we had to build this perfect metropolis, uh. I'd rather live in Matsunui though, Matoro. That yeah. that yeah, that part was dumb. <laughs> yeah. So, but then, okay. oh, thankfully he gets to sacrifice. He gets to die. Thankfully he gets to have a stupid death scene anyway later, and then everyone's like, I guess he wasn't so bad, and they build him a pity statue. <laughs> What what a powerful message from Greg Farshi to the children. No, you know that You're part actually on... really that, that part really sucks. Actually, that part blows. I like the idea of that universe, but I hate what happens in it. Yeah. Now that I remember, think about kids, it. you have to sacrifice yourself heroically to be anything. Everyone in life. will hate you if you fail to sacrifice yourself heroically if given the chance. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Uh, uh, also, thanks to the um, power of BS01, I see that upon being exposed to the energy of Cardanui, Takanuva was enlarged in size and granted an increase in strength. What? Then, <laughs> yeah. Upon returning to Metrinui, his size was reduced to normal. <laughs> what? So, <laughs> his, so, his, so his Titan set form is just like a temporary upgrade? Yeah, he... Hometown mm. advantage, I guess, because he's from. I Cardinal. feel like that's probably someone asked Greg, and he probably said that in a in a post. Maybe, I would well. I would have to look into it because there's no citation for this one. Yeah. Mm, okay, f sure. I mean, I feel like I understand a little better. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So. You know, I was mentioning earlier, Hookie is my favorite one. Uh, who is your favorite one at this point that you have now read my all favorite, of it? My favorite Toa? Bionicle in general. Not necessarily my favorite so. Bionicle? Mm. That's tough. I mean, I like Vakama a lot. Right. Uh, because he's so... He's just so, like... He's just plagued with so many doubts all the time. He just, like, has no confidence in himself, and that's a relatable struggle. I like Sidorak a lot because he is just, like, the universe's, like, biggest failure. Mm -hmm. He's always, like, put in... <laughs> every time you see him, he's, like, screwing up and embarrassing himself. Um, I guess you only you only really see him the one time, but, like... He's he's basically the butt of the joke of the entire Hordika arc, and then the one other time you see him, uh, the shadowed one is like, "Oh, look at this loser! Get him out of here! We're mm -hmm. gonna kill that guy because he lost his duel." <laughs> um, no, 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 they don't kill him. They, they, he has like, he's like, "We would kill this guy, but like, we'll send him, we'll send him somewhere to like, <laughs> we'll send him somewhere to like command an army as a joke, and it'll just be like a distraction or, so, or something <laughs> like that." Um, who else? Who a lot else of is good? Confusing motivations in Bionicle. Yeah, there, there sure are. I like. Is there anyone else? I kind of like Nuju. Mm -hmm. I like that Nuju's such a nerd. Uh, such an introvert. He he is also plagued with doubts. Honestly, all the all the the <laughs> um the Metro Nui. The, the Toa Metro are all just full of doubt. All the Metro Nui are just, they're all just like, man, being a Toa, kind of a hassle, kind of wish I could just go back to my job. <laughs> kind of wish I could just be a normal guy again. Um, I'll just go with Vakama. Nah, it's just Vakama. Alright, Vakama. That's, that's a strong choice. I, yeah. I've always, I feel like Vakama's popular pick. Mostly because yeah, okay. like his motivations in he 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 gets a lot of like character exactly development. He there's a lot of focus on him through a bunch of uh... yeah yeah. So would it uh, be... I mean a lot a lot a lot of the other Toa kind of get sort of a sort of cursory treatment compared to him. He's like mm -hmm. yeah. right. 
w- would it be fair to assume that Metronui, like that sort of story arc, would be your favorite era of Bionicle, or would you have another one? I th- I think it. Mm, um, I'm kind of tempted to say Voya Nui for the just for the Paraka. Nice. What a I base the, opinion. I think I think the Paraka are so. It's a really, it's a really, I think it's a really compelling choice to start. It's like, it's like Bionicle's dark arc. And the way that they do that is they started out with a bunch of fake Toa that like <laughs> betray the Matoran and are like the polar opposite of what a Toa is supposed to stand for. I think that's a great conceit for like an arc. Uh, yeah, I'm, I would probably say. I would probably say that, yeah. Cool. I like, I like, I like Brutaka. I like that Brutaka has just like it. It makes a lot of sense for a guy to just be like, you know, I just don't believe in in Matanui anymore. He's the only one who's <laughs> like, I just, I just don't believe in Matanui. I, I think he's abandoned us. Of course. Uh, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad that at least one guy is there to like have some doubts about God in this, in this world <laughs> that is defined by like, we all love God so much. <laughs> ben Saint finding the one atheist relatable. How there expected. has to be one. <laughs> it would be, it would be so annoying if there weren't a single one. I think it's a great, he's a great inclusion. Yeah, I agree. I didn't even know about that aspect of his character until like he started talking about it. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just like the the reason him and Axon are fighting is because mm-hmm. is because he was like I think that maybe this whole Matanui thing is a big is a, just a big joke and Axon's like no come on Matanui like, no 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 <laughs> no more Matanui see what I had no always assumed no more Matanui what I had always assumed was going on between Axon and Britaka was because they're both in the order of Matanui before right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, I, they technically both still are. Right. Uh, yeah. So I just assumed it was like a, a Lee Khan and Nadiki thing where they were just like, oh, you are my brother and you betrayed me because you went crazy. I thought I that mean, was they, it. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of, it kind of is that, yeah. But the, the reason that that Axon, that uh, Brutaka betrayed them was because he stopped believing in Matanui. It's kind um, of base. <laughs> yeah, it is. Although, okay, what he decides to do after that revelation, which is give the Paraka the mask of life, is like <laughs> unbelievably stupid. Like, why? Take it yourself. Freaking take it yourself. If you if you if you're a nihilist and you believe in nothing now, mm-hmm. the Paraka are like a joke, <laughs> <laughs> which is why I like them. But like, they're a freaking joke. They're 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 simultaneously like a joke, but they're all they also like beat. They beat the Toa Nuva. Like, they're just yeah. better than the Toa Nuva. And that's Greatest case silly. of, like, reverse plot armor ever. Yeah. They just, they needed a new... They needed a new... I think they would kind of make more sense if they just... If the Toa Nuva just didn't go. If the Toa Nuva just went off to do their own stuff, and it was just the Anaika that fought against the Paraka, it would make a little more sense, but it's okay. It's fine. They yeah. just... They just... They just screwed up. The Toa Nuva just, they, they zagged when they should have zagged. <laughs> they rolled a natural one or whatever. Everyone has a bad day. And this was their, it was their <laughs> darkest hour. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I, this is because the only two Bionicle books I've actually read are the first two from Voya Nui. But I kind of liked, you know, that aspect of the story. Where is, uh-huh. is one of them... Um, Legacy of Evil. I don't remember. I know the first one is Island of Doom, I think. Yeah, Island of Doom. That's the one where they 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 show up on the island and they pretend to be fake Toa. Mm-hmm. Legacy of Evil is the one that's like it's all just the Paraka's backstory. Oh, okay. Uh, that one. No, that's not the one I read. Okay, that one's that one's kind of interesting. You learn all about like how they tried to betray the Shadowed One. You learn. You learn that the reason that Zaktan is made of a bunch of little bugs is because the Shadowed One tried to disintegrate him with eye lasers and it just only half worked. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the, the, um, that whole aspect of Bionicle, like the Shadowed One and the, uh, what's their name, the Dark Hunters, 
Yeah, like I'm dark completely dungeons. oblivious to all that aspect, so I look forward they, to learning about it. <laughs> they they actually like they actually called um it, it wasn't entirely a retcon. Like I think they did at the time call Nadiki and Kreka dark hunters. Like in the books, they refer to them as that, even oh, yeah. in the Metro Nui saga. So <clears throat> I th kind of thought it was like a retcon <clears throat> to explain why they were there, but no, no, they were. They were there from the beginning, and they were called Dark Hunters, and, you know, in the movie, he says, like, you can't call me brother anymore. So, like, they did they did kind of have sort of a plan for those two, and it's this whole... Yeah, the, the, the Dark Hunters is basically just a big catch-all thing of, like, if, if, you're a, if you're a bad guy, but you're not a Makuta, you're probably a Dark Hunter, or you were at some point. I love that the, um... Because um, I remember there's a book about Dark Hunters, it's just, like, a guidebook of... Yes, it's, it's basically just all uh, like contest builds and yes. stuff like that. Have you read that? Yes, I have not like read it thoroughly, but I have seen a bunch of. Uh, mm -hmm. I I just I think yesterday I was reading about one called Shadow Stealer, mm -hmm. who is a former Hand of Matanui member. No, not Hand. Of, he's a former Hand of Artaka <laughs> member. Hand of Artaka. He did not join the 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 order of matanui after the hand of artaka was disbanded instead he joined the dark hunters uh but then he like he ended up fighting against other dark hunters or something uh anyway yes i'm aware of the book right so first of all i was just looking it up to see when it came out because i i had a vague memory maybe it came out in probably like it, it came out no, in 2006. probably i was gonna say sometime around there yeah yeah but the funny thing is <laughs> The cover of the book, it's um. Oh, it's Kitongu. It's Kitongu. Like why? <laughs> do you know? Do you know why? I know why. Why? Why? Well, well, okay. It's not that I know why. It, it's that Greg gave it a reason why. There's okay. Uh, which I want to say that it's in the many deaths of Toa too. Yet it might be a different story. No, it might be. I I think it's in. It's either in the many deaths of Toa Two yet, or no one gets left behind. Mm -hmm. There's one line that Greg threw in there as an explanation of why Kitongu is on the cover of the Dark Hunters book, and it just <laughs> mentions that at some point someone was fighting against. It's the guy. His I think his name is Triglax. There's a shape shifting a uh, Dark Hunter. And it just mentions that there was they fought against a shape shifting dark hunter who took on the form of they don't call him Kitongu they call him a yellow Rahi with one eye. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's just implied that Triglax was shape shifting into Kitongu. That's amazing, and, that, and that's why he's on the cover of the <laughs> of the book. That's so stupid and amazing. It and is. yeah, I, I was reading through the um, the trivia section for the book on BS One, and you got that exactly right. It wasn't many deaths of Toa Tuya, and it was Triglax. So, congrats. You know your stuff. It wasn't. It wasn't many deaths of Toa Tuya. It was many Not, deaths. Oh, okay. I thought it was in the other one, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, cool. I I just read that like a couple days ago, and <laughs> I just thought that was really, just thought that was very funny. Yeah, um, the reason yeah. I, I was like, <laughs> I burst out laughing uh, a little bit. When you mentioned Shadow Stealer, because I opened up his page, I mean, this mm -hmm. dude is one of the stupidest fucking builds I've seen. Uh, but he's just <laughs> like, well, yeah, he yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no hate like... to no hate to Aaron Cassidy who created this apparently, even who was probably twelve at the time. He's got that. He's got, well, I guess it's not sp strictly the the good guy face. It's just the like, what? You know, something that something that perplexes me is that like the face under the mask. It's like it's like different in the different like generations. Mm -hmm. Like there's the there's the there's the face that like the the original Tohunga had, and in right. and, and in in the in Minogue, there's a bunch of those like carved Stashes, into po yeah. into Pokoro. Um, Daihafu mostly. And then there's there's like the other face that was like what the original Toa had. And then I thought like most other figures had that Toa face. Like the I'm pretty sure that the uh the To not the Tohunga, the Turaga have that same head. Uh and then a bunch of later figures they have like this head, which is like yes. the good guy face head. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't, I don't know if you have any insight into like how many different heads are there, and is there any like logic to like who has what head? Right. Yeah. Th this is just a toy thing. Um, so you you're right so far. Tohonga head, Mada head, which I think was also used by the Turaga as well. Do these then, pieces have names? I guess they probably must, right? They have numbers. Um, hmm. But yes. The, Interesting. Uh, the other one is what's it called? Fuck. Uh, yeah, the, the Metronui head, which is the good guy head. That one was used... Mm. Well, So, like, that's the head on on the Toa Metru? That's the head on the Toa Metru, and it's also the head on the Mari and the Fantoka and Mystica. Really? Okay. Yes. It, I guess it wouldn't be the Anika because they had, like... Could you mm -hmm. could you even take the Anika's masks off? Yes, you can. Let me show you that piece because I love they it. They had like a glowing. No, the Anika were advertised to have glow in the dark heads, but they don't. The piece underneath the mask is glow in the dark. So is it actually? Yes. Okay. Um, let me find it. So basically, underneath the mask is like um. It's just a plastic piece that it's a gradient from y green to white. So the green bit would be the eyes, and then that would be. This their is teeth. so. This is so funny. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. That's really. That's really it. That it is. Glows. Does the, does the yellow part glow? I don't remember which part glows. Um, mm. because the, the oh yeah, it's so it's so it's so like smooth and like it's just like there's just like isn't there just like a rod kind of yeah, so bizarre. Yeah, because the the Piraka head is sort of like the Metro head. It, it's like an edit because it, it's a Metro head, but then they added the the big the teeth. teeth, which also yeah. glow in the dark. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh. Um, the this <laughs> um. I don't know what to say about these. There's so there, there's a lot because of the Hordika, if I remember correctly, they just like, they just use like a random piece as their head, like their. I know you you couldn't remove the Hordika masks, right? Correct. There, the, yeah, yeah, there weren't masks. It was just like one big um, head piece that attached to like a rod <laughs> and a ball. Yeah. Then um, the per no not the Paraka. The Baraki were also like that. They were just heads that would attach to a connector mm. piece. Mm. The mm. Fantoka and Mystica Makuda, they used masks. Yes. Um, what kind of head did they have, though? Metru head as well. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's, at some point, they just started using the Metru head. Basically, yes. Yeah. Because and the, and this 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 shadow stealer that's a metro head right that is a metro head and after yes. in the Glatorian years they changed it yeah to, um, let me find it call it the uh, wait no there there's two different heads because in 2008 for the Matoran for Cardanui they introduced a new type of head and it sucks <laughs> let me try and find it let's uh, let's see it so it's this one oh. It's really weird. <laughs> is it is it meant to be like made of light? Is that the idea? I don't, I don't know. Like man. A, tran a transparent piece. I think I read somewhere that like the Anika head is like that because it's meant to be like their head is just like glowing like star energy, yeah, or something. Yeah, I don't know if there's any lore explanation because yeah. you'll have to find out for the lecture. I. Yeah, I don't know. And then for the Glatorian, they change it to this like blatantly like Iron Man looking thing. Yes, yes. It. I mean, it. I guess I'll say it looks. It looks more like a face. <laughs> but I mean, I guess it's supposed to, because you because you're supposed to see it through the the mask. the the mask or whatever. Like they they wear masks, but yeah, well, they yeah, only the cover thing... like most of the face. With the Glatorians, Glatorians don't wear masks, they wear helmets. Right, right, yeah, so, sure. I, yeah, they definitely changed that piece for the Glatorian because... Oh, of, like, you you put the helmet in that, like, top... The slot on the top. Exactly, and there's, like, a I few... They're, they're, they're sets, so they're, they're, like... Yeah, they're, like, 
face is uncovered. Like you can see through their mm. face, which I think yeah, is yeah. I think it's cool. Oh uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, I was shocked to learn about the like the Glatorian like figure game. Figure game, the, like, the, yes. The life, the life counter, like the Thornax Blaster, uh, mm -hmm. a combat game, and you know, uh, uh, it was really interesting to learn that that was like a feature in the Glatorian saga because that guy I mentioned before, Brian Ellis, when he was talking about, he left the team when they were when they were doing um, two thousand eight. Uh, he was working on like one of the Makuta. His his Makuta design didn't end up getting used, mm -hmm. but he they he said that the team were talking about like tabletop gaming and stuff and they were considering like tabletop gaming like applications for these toys really? and then the I, yeah and then i they were they were looking into into board games and stuff and like thinking about it and then they, they did it and then they actually <laughs> they made a bionicle game for the 2009 glatorian like those guys were like they did it yeah well now that i think about it um in 2001 and i think it was only in 2001 there were there was a Bionicle board game and there were trading cards. So there was like a trading card game that you could play. They, yes, I mean that's I mean that's a little different, but yeah, yeah they're, absolutely. They're, I know they 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 made a board they made a card game and then they also made like an expansion pack for it called like that was like Borok themed. Yes, I believe. Uh, so. yeah, I know there was a card game. I don't know if anyone played it, but mm. I know it existed. People are asking stupid prices for those packs on eBay because really, of they are. really, yeah. that would be. I wonder. I wonder if the game's any good. Probably not. It's. Right? I don't. My memories of the Glatorian game, or do you mean the board game? I was. I was talking about the card game. Oh, the card. I have no idea. I do not play card games. Uh, did you? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Did you? Did you try? Did you try the Glatorian figure game? Yes, because one shoot, of the... Shoot, shooting the Thornax Blaster? How was it? it? Not that great, to be honest. So, the, there, there's levels to the launcher thing. <laughs> Some launchers are way better than others. I'll give you my tier uh... list in a bit. But I did play the, uh, the Glatorian one because one of the other toys that I really liked as a kid was Beatamon. I don't remember oh, the I... rules, but it was basically the same thing. Shoot balls at people. I'm vaguely familiar. I've heard of beat em on. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought it was so neat that they put a little life counter on your guys. And you could even, with, with Tellurus, Tellurus, you could even put, he had a life counter, but when you put him in his Scopio vehicle, you could put the life counter on the Scopio, and he would be, oh. and that would be like its own, that was its own piece in the game. That's cool. With its, yeah. with its Thornax blaster on the tail. Yeah, yeah, very cool. If I remember correctly, the Titans had two life counters. Oh, maybe that's probably... Yeah, maybe the vehicle and him had a separate one. Mm -hmm. Or something like that. Um, you know, maybe the game wasn't great. But I applaud the ambition. Yeah, me too, because it was fun. And one of the, again, ambition... For the Glatorian year, they made not one, not two, but three Glatorian fighting games, and that like counter system. Oh, ca yeah, like like, like a like a flash it. game or something. Yes, yes. Yeah, I've heard people talk uh, pretty fondly about the like the Glatorian battle arena or whatever it was called. Mm -hmm. I haven't I haven't seen it actually, but maybe I should like give it a a gander and just see what was up with it because I I've definitely heard it mentioned and like people say that they used to play it. You should, because it's not just fights. If I remember correctly, there was, like, a town section. You could, like, oh. walk around and talk to people, if I remember correctly. Mm, interesting. So, yeah, Neat. you should definitely check that out. If you haven't yet, there are two uh, things as well from the website, Flash Games, that you should check out. Is um, What's that? The Paraka animations and the Anika animations, I think they are. I... Uh, I've seen the Paraka animations. The the one about the ones where they're just like going around in the caves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those. Okay, cool. And uh, I don't, I don't remember if the Anika ones were like a separate one or if it was just like the ending. I think the final episode of the Paraka ones was the Anika one or something like that. And then I it, think so because I I, I it I ends with like all... a strategy game. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, the the one huh? of them like ends with 
like a you know fire emblem type or like more like Venog type thing. I don't remember exactly, but I'll, I'll try and find it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what you're referring to. If you <laughs> if you want to link me, I would I would be interested to see it. Voya Nui um, online animations. But yeah, again, I, I just have a bias because 2006 is my favorite year. The vibes were just the best. You know, all American rejects, thunder, rain, chain link fences. <laughs> I like, I kind of like the like the, the the chain link fence sort of like urban sort of flavor of the Paraka stronghold. Part of me, part of me likes it. Part of me thinks it's corny. Yeah, uh, it's definitely like super dated. <laughs> cause, yeah, you know, very obviously just hey, you like Lincoln Park, right? <laughs> it's very, it's very like. Uh, where did th where did they get those chain link fences? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's like, but yeah, how they sort of, I don't know. I like that they were going for like a a grimy a grimy industrial kind of feel with them. I think that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That was it made it made it felt pretty unique. Uh, also, I don't know what it is because they're not that different from each other. But I have no trouble at all remembering which. Paraka is which, whereas like mm -hmm. the Baraki, I could maybe name half of them. Mm -hmm. Prydak was white, Takadox was blue, Elek was green. Carab, I think. Okay, no, maybe I, I think Carapar was yellow, and Mantak or Mantax was the black one. So maybe I did know them. Yeah, I, you, know. I think you got them. Um... I, I damn. Uh, I sent you I don't a know. photo of the uh, the thing I was referring to. There's a there's a YouTube video here. It's just called Paraka Episode Six. Oh, what the hell? What the hell is this? I've never seen this before. This looks this looks kind of cool, honestly. It's it's like very comic book stylized. That that whole series of animations is super cool. <laughs> and it if... a, yeah, it had a it had a weird visual style. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like, yeah, with, like pr kinda, yeah, like pre-rendered, like r like renders of the Paraka with like these like generated like thick outlines on them, mm -hmm. placed on these yeah these pre-rendered like like CG backgrounds of like caves and junk. It's very very, fun. very odd. Yeah, I game looks kind of neat. I kind of I don't want to play it. Maybe I'll watch this video. Bricks of Steel. Yeah. It's not, it's not even, it's generous to call it a game. It's just like, oh, uh... Really? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Well, it looks interesting, but I, I, guess, I guess we'll see. Uh, um, yeah. Boy, I knew he had a vibe, and I appreciate that. Me too. Let's see, is there any, you know, changing topics here? Is there any specific events or just anything... Bionicle that specifically sticks out in your mind as being like interesting or cool or something that you like. Hmm. What what's what sticks out to me? What sticks out to me about Bionicle? Uh. That I I was gonna say uh, I was gonna I was gonna complain about the movies. I was gonna complain about the weird like way that the tone of the movies doesn't add, doesn't match like. The, the rest of the story. I was going to be my next that I question. <laughs> okay. my, ne my next question was going to be things that you don't like or complaints. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, things that I like about my, yeah, I like, I like the big, the big story engine twist and how just, and just how thoroughly it was like hidden uh, for so long. And, and yet it's so like, it's so obviously like planned all the way mm. from the very beginning really appreciate that um i think I... it's really cool that they even had the ambition to pull off something that long yeah. running yeah. because modern modern lego uh story stuff it's basically like seasonal like every season is something new and they just keep retconning and retconning stuff from before i i don't i don't think they they originally planned for it to go like they didn't expect it to to go that long I, I don't, don't think, think they so. ever thought that it would be eight years until they had the big reveal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's really kind of odd that it that it did, but I guess every year they were just like, 
well, yeah, we had a big year this year. We're doing it again. Okay, we're not getting canceled. All right, well, let's let's keep the mystery going. Um, and I and I guess it paid off. Um, other other stuff that I like, I don't know, just like the the weird, the weird like tone and vibe that like the whole like thing of like how they're these like weird robot creatures that live on this like mystical island it's just so it's just so weird it's so different there's not there's truly nothing else like it um truly. and i and honestly I, I can complain about it but i like i like it when i get to a part and i read a part of the story and i'm like greg just had to say they told greg he had to say this he had to explain why is it <laughs> called the nin why is it called the ninra ghost blaster oh because like there's some guys called the ghosts from a place called ninra and they make weapons yeah, that's why it's called the Ninra Ghost Blaster. Sure. I forgot that was the um, explanation. That's so stupid. Yeah. Or or um the other one that's like the My the Midax Sky Blaster. The reason oh. why it's called a Midax Sky Blaster is because uh not Huki and Kongu. Um I vaguely uh, remember this one. Pohatu it... and Yeah, do you remember? Uh, was it that there was like some some Matoran that like I yes. no I don't remember some Matoran yes. or something that that like was always it's in because the sky something like that it it's because uh, yeah Huki not Huki um uh Pohatu knew an Onu Matoran who liked the sun he liked he liked to be out in the sun and he was seen as weird for that but but uh, Pohatu thought he was cool he just knew a guy he thought was cool whose <laughs> name was Mydak so they were like. Yeah, we'll name the gun Mydak. And Lua just thought the name Sky Blaster was cool. And just, he yeah. said, like, he, I always wanted to name a gun the Sky Blaster. Okay, we'll combine them. It's the Mydak Sky Blaster. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I love completely that. forgot. I completely forgot. But as, as soon as you mentioned, like, Onomatoran that loves the sun, I was like, oh, yeah, that, that guy is in Menok 2. <laughs> Do you remember him? Is he? Yeah, he is. In, like, the entrance to Onu Koro, he just has, like, a hut there. I completely forgot about that. No freaking way. And his name that, was Midak. That, yeah. that... Are you serious? Yes, I am dead ass. I... You're... You, that can't be true. That can't be true. It's true. What? That's... A, that, yeah, it's the, it's the guy with, um... It's the guy with, um... Uh, what's his name? Not Nuparu, the other Onumatoran from the 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 Onumatoran from the original mm -hmm. McDonald's set. Uh, Frick, what's his name? The guy uh, that never amounts to anything. Onepu. Yes, Onepu. He has Onepu's old Usal crab. Uh, oh right, yeah. I I I, I have to confirm this. My Dak. Um, yep. He's got a pigeon. Bionic one. Yeah. Well, that's so strange. That makes me rethink everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy he has the little he has the little grass in his mouth. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, well, this makes me rethink everything. This makes me think that no, they this didn't. Just the entire lecture. They didn't. Though they didn't tell him, they couldn't have told him to call it the Mydax Sky Blaster. Or maybe I mean it must have been. It 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 must have been Greg. Greg must have been like. Because the because the name Mydax like pre pre-existed the gun mm -hmm. so he must he must have decided to call it that and he must have been like yeah we'll name a gun after this guy <laughs> i'm uh, naming my, my next gun ben saint just why would you it's just a really weird way to name a gun i don't know i just don't get it <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, yeah. sure. Oh, that brings well, me back. I, I, I was going to give you my um, blaster tier list <laughs> real quick because that's a that's an important thing you need to understand about Bionicle is the blaster. Yeah, sure. Because you, you, yeah, go on. Yeah, no, you go on. I was just gonna. Do you want me to rank my blasters? Absolutely. Then I'll tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> I probably am wrong because like. Uh, I don't even, like, I've never, like, played with any of them. I don't know how they function. Mm -hmm. All I know is they just get described in the... All right. Um, 
I would I would probably have to say the Midax Sky Blaster sounds the mm -hmm. best because if I recall correctly, it just shoots an orb of light that just like annihilates anything it goes through, mm -hmm. and that sounds good. Whereas a Zaymor launcher, it sucks. Uh, it doesn't do anything. You have you unless you put like a demon fluid in it, and then it will mm -hmm. curse the target with demon fluid. I guess you could probably put lava in the in the sphere, and then it would hurt. Uh, you could do yeah. something with it. But, like, it, the sphere doesn't even do anything. So that one's pretty bad. Um, the Kordak Blaster probably does a lot of damage. I guess it probably explodes or something because its name means, like, devastation or whatever. Uh, so that one's, that one's probably, like, pretty high. Uh, the Squid Launcher seems pretty poor. Do, do the... Do the do the Makuta have a gun that shoots shadow leeches, or do they just have the big ball that, like, explodes into shadow leeches? B big ball that explodes into shadow leeches. There's a yeah. mechanism in their backs that you just push. It's just, yeah, like, a like, very flexible piece, and the, the thing just drops. The, the Yeah, that guy Brian Ellis, he he came up with that, and he, like, made cool. the original prototype out of, like a, like, a hair, like, comb thing that, like, you squeeze and, like, yeah, holds yeah. a... That makes total yeah. sense now. <laughs> that, 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 yeah, that. he 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 just he says he's like a horror guy. He was mm -hmm. a big into like the horror aesthetic. So his his Makuta was like sort of the prototype for what became Vampra. Apparently, mm -hmm. uh, it was like very like it looked like a rotting like zombie bat. And uh, he was like, "What about a bomb that explodes into like leeches? What about a leech bomb?" And everyone was like, "Yeah, okay, yep, <laughs> sounds good." <laughs> And they did it. Um, Fun fact, I I'm not sure if you know about this, Greg Farshti, also a big horror guy. I have heard that. Yeah, I, I have heard people say that he says he's a horror dude. Um, other blasters? I mean, how many other blasters even are there? Uh, the um, Rotuka launcher. The, um, oh, the Rotuka launcher. I, I would say Rotuka launcher extremely high because it seems mm -hmm. like they just do anything. Yeah. Like, everyone with a Rotuka launcher does a different thing with a Rotuka launcher. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah. Isn't there one of... I think one of the Viserac combiner sets, like, the Rotuka launcher just, like, opens portals or something like that? Yeah, the Ka I think it's the Kagarak. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the one that... It's the one that banishes you to the Shadow Realm. <laughs> if you get hit by... And, and that one's so funny. My favorite thing is that, like, of the Toa Metru... Um, Wainua has, like, a comically worthless mask power that it's, like, just a yes. flashlight. And then he gets banished to the Shadow Realm the one time that, like, a flashlight might be a useful power to have, and it doesn't work because the Hordika don't have mask powers. He, the one time his useless mask could help him. <laughs> he doesn't have it. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That one's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I would say Rotuka... I would say Rotuka top tier... Then the Maddox Sky Blaster, then the Kordak Blaster, then I guess I would put Zaymor Launcher under that because it just seems like you could probably think of something useful to do with you can put anything in that sphere. Uh, then um, probably the leeches would probably go under that because the leeches seem ineffective, but they get the they clearly get the job done. Mm -hmm. Squid Launcher seems pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah. It um. Is. Actually, probably, I mean, bottom tier would probably be the air launcher that the, the Mari Matoran use. I mean, it's good there, but it would be useless anywhere else. Right. So uh, I wasn't even considering that one, because in my mind, that is literally just a Samurai launcher. Yeah, yeah, it's, t yeah. I guess it might just be a Zamor launcher They just put air in the sphere, or I guess they just shoot bubbles out of it but that's effectively the same thing mm -hmm. so yeah okay that's pretty similar I, I guess that's my tier list right so i was like approaching this with a completely different idea it was just mm. how how good they were as like a toy and how cool they, they i thought they were as a kid yeah yeah lay, lay it on me so function wise the best one is actually also the my deck sky blaster that thing hits. That thing is actually really, really strong. Yes. Okay. okay. It uses the exact same like is ball. Is it like sp spring loaded? Yes, it is spring loaded. Okay. And uh, so basically, you put in four balls into it, I think, and and yeah, it's just uh, spring loaded. 
Mm-hmm. Then, mm-hmm. Uh, then it'll probably be the same war launcher because it's basically kind of the same, but not mm-hmm. as cool. But just shoots a ball. Yeah, the fact that the Anika got like a, a magazine part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The four stacked on top of each other. That's pretty cool. That's so cool. Yes. And um, what goes after that? Well, wait, isn't it? Isn't it like? Don't you like pull back the little pin and it like shoots it like sort of like a pinball machine? Basically, yes. Uh, no, yeah. the other way around. Because you don't pull it back, you push it in. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, uh, what's but the yes. other ones? The, um... Kordak Blaster? Kordak is cool, but the issue... So, <laughs> the Kordak one has a very specific issue, which is that, you know, that year, underwater story, if you try to use that underwater, the part, the piece will literally break within I mean, you're, minutes. you're not actually supposed to play with them in the water, right? Um, no, you, but when I you're a kid... You Lego, I guess you can put Lego in water. I guess it, it's fine. No. It floats, I the, think. <laughs> the gun the gun won't work. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I'm sure, the, um, I'm sure. What else is there? The Ninra Ghostbuster? Kind of lame. It's just Wait. air. I don't even remember. What to, I forgot to even mention the Ninra <laughs> Ghost Blaster. What does it do? Uh, it just... Lore-wise, I have no idea, to be completely honest with you. Okay. But I don't the, remember. The piece is just like... It's kind of like a vo- v- vacuum thing. Um, it's a vacuum thing. I don't. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know how to describe this, but you. What push do you it, mean? You push it, and air pushes the thing out. It's very low power. Does it shoot like a little puff of air? No, it 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 pushes out a piece with air. Oh, it's like a, like a. Spring. It's like a. It's like a. It's like a, a a bellows or something that like air pressurizes it launches a piece with air pressure i see yes that's exactly it thank you for uh, <laughs> explaining okay it. okay yeah i'm looking at a picture and i get it yes the other one is uh, kanoka disc launcher pretty good actually oh i forgot the kanoka disc launcher mm. isn't vakama the only one that has that as a toa yes matoran and metronui had it and oh. the Vaki had it in their mouths. Yeah. Well the right, right. The Vaki mouth. Just Forgot about that hell. one. Um, mm. Rutuka launcher. I'm like very conflicted because I gotta imagine that that would not hit very hard. It does not hit hard, and it's very hard to like aim at something. Like yeah. if you're trying to hit something, it does not work like that. But it's like a general toy thing, making a thing fly up in the air. It's, it was very fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. The other one was what am I thinking? Oh, I, I also, can't. I can't imagine actually trying to hit something with it. Uh, completely impossible, and also very easy to lose the the mm-hmm. disc. Um, mm-hmm. Am I missing anything? Oh, right, squid launcher, but fucking less than F tier. Thing yeah. sucks hard. Uh, I, I I remember actually. Yeah, that Brian Ellis guy. He says that like their original prototypes of it worked really well, and but they were they actually worked too well, and they were like a, really? a safety hazard. Yeah, they had to like <laughs> deliberately make them worse so that like kids wouldn't shoot their eyes out with the squid launchers. <laughs> okay, I can understand that now. Hmm. Right, yeah, that's basic overview of the the launchers. Which, believe it or not, yes, we can all agree important. that the squid launchers suck. Yeah, so that's the stupid. thing. Stupid. Squid launcher, stupid, awful, sucks. Singing squid. Have you seen the singing squid video? It's stupid. No. There was um in Bionicle.com there were just like a few joke videos, and one of them was like a squid singing. One of mm. them was um Rakshi Rocks, which is just like a, a Rakshi with a staff and it's like pretending oh. it's a guitar. I have seen that one. Yeah, that, that one's that somewhere. That one's big because like every single AMV uses it. Yeah, I yeah, it's kind of it's kind of just unironically cool. It is. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, uh, that's a whole thing. Bionicle.com have you, have you, was so important. Have you seen? Have you seen an animation? I think it might have been like a demo animation. Uh, of like Onua, like leading this like weird little like. A uh, bunch of like proto Matoran in like a weird little chant. 
Yes, Here. yes. I think that's from this the cancelled game. Yes, that is from the cancelled game. I think that's going to show they up. Sound in like the they, sound, they, sound, they sound like aliens. Yes, I am 99% sure this is from the cancelled video game, yes. What are they saying? I Bad's have... a gate, but a gate. Bad's a gate, but a gate. Let me try and this, listen to this. This rules. This rules. This is, hyp this is hypnotic. It's, it's, yeah, it's a good video. I think that you, you got one of, I think that you get one of these videos every time you complete a level. The, um, yeah, I saw a couple of cutscenes and I wasn't sure if it was like placeholder, but like, yeah, the, the characters don't like talk. They like speak like Simlish to each other. Yes. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. Er, early Bionicles was going for like a very strange vibe. Yeah, because it, like I, like the demo like the demo CDs. Um, I was literally just about you, to talk about the demo CDs. Yeah. 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 The um, they're all like eerily silent. I guess that's just yeah. CDs though. Yeah, and also the um, uh, I love the music from the Power Pack. The uh, one that's credited to Liwa and yeah. Dolly and stuff. Right, right. Just had like a cool, like industrial music aesthetic. I, I haven't given it a thorough listen to be to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's just good. It's made by this guy Paul Hardcastle, who just makes music like a shit ton of music. You know, didn't um, there's like a band, like a band started as like, yes. What are they called? Cryo? Cryo Shell. Yes. Cryo Shell. Yes. Like the the Bionicle musicians like formed a band or something. Still uh, still exists. They're going to drop a song on Bionicle Day. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exciting. So I'm not sure. There, there is documentation about this. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Cryo Shell, I'm pretty sure, exists... J not just for Bionicle, but because of Bionicle. Um, they did yeah. the, the music for 2007, 2008, and 2009. Like, I don't think all their songs are, like, Bionicle. No, they, they have they have a full album, and not all of it is Bionicle. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they, they do have original music. The yeah. uh, There is one before them. It's They're called All Insane Kids, who made the music for 2005, the Hordika year. Um, is that they, another like original Bionicle uh, uh, performance or, or operation? Or I've received confirmation that they do not exist for Bionicle, but mm. I, I, that's as, as far as I remember. I think that they were just like a local act that they got to make yeah. music for. Act was the word I was looking for. The um, but for me, like. There are only two songs were the ones that were used in Bionicle. So mm. I, I had no idea, but eventually they released like the full album online. Like someone just got a CD and the whole thing was mid. <laughs> they were not as good as the no. Bionicle songs. Which was Damn. A very sad day for me. But Cryo mm. Shell generally pretty decent, pretty nice. Mm. Christian Faber's blog uh, promoted them a little bit. Yeah, because... They still exist, and the only reason, like, they do anything is, like, if Faber calls them out to do something, I think. <laughs> right, yeah. Because Faber now is working on, has been working for, I think, a decade already on his new IP called Rebel, Rebel Nature. Rebel Nature. Yes. Does, does not seem to meaningfully exist in any way that I no. can, like, detect, other than a thing that he has, like, posted about a couple times. Not yet. I, I guess it's a... Is it a comic book? So the original idea, as far as I know, for Rebel Nature, was that it was, like, a Temple Run, like, runner app game. What? Really? That, that was, like, the first thing that was going to release about it. And it was called huh. Escape from Rig 21, I think it was called. Escape oh, from Rig yeah, something. that rings a bell. That rings a bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And But as far as I know, he his plan is like you know, full multimedia empire, movies, TV show. Well, I, that's ambitious. Well, you know, the marketing types. <laughs> yeah. Because I think there's like an actress for the Rebel Nature Girl. Uh, really? Like a voice actress? 
I don't remember. I <laughs> really should have prepared a little better, but... <laughs> I, I, I read his posts on his blog. They're, they're from a long time ago. Yeah, they're from like yeah. 2015, 2016 or whatever. Um, and he hasn't posted about it in a while. And mm. I kind of just assumed that it was like dead or never got off the ground. I'm kind of surprised if there's like news coming out about it. He posts about it like maybe once or twice a year. Is he just switched over from posting on his blog? Now he just posts on Instagram, and oh. he has a YouTube channel as well. Where he no shit, things. I did, didn't even know that. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's funny because <laughs> yeah, I, I I read about Rebel Nature and I I thought it was a, a comic book because like it seemed like there was a lot of like really nice illustrations mm -hmm. to it and it looked like an art centric project, I guess. So what what I know about Faber, from what I can tell, he seems to be like an art guy. He, so I think that was just probably like yeah. Art. I mean, he's he he drew a lot of the like original art for the concept art for Bionicle, and like he's mm -hmm. clearly a very good artist. Oh yeah, he's very good. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you know, this is completely apart from anything. But Christian Faber, at some point, <laughs> he just started posting on. On Instagram, something called... He just kept posting about hashtag 14B2020 for like a year or two. And people 14 were like... 14B2020? Yes. So that was... Basically, he was kind of teasing. He was trying to bring back Bionicle in some capacity. Uh, apparently, he what, had... What, is... yeah. what does it mean? I wish I could tell you. He gave an explanation. It means... One for B twenty twenty, um, so you know, like oh. one for all, one for, and then the B stands for Bionicle, oh. and then twenty twenty. Oh, one for Bionicle twenty. Okay, and I, he gave see. he gave an explanation. He's really into Gary V, which is like all you need to know about him. Wait, um, Gary V, uh, NFT like marketing guru type guy. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, that's too bad. Yeah, but hey, his stuff is great. Like his art, Christian Faber's mm. art is super good. So, mm. but he was yeah, like, I will, posting. I would, I would scope out whatever Rebel Nature ends up being if it like mm -hmm. came out tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he just like for a couple of years there, he was just posting quackery, like right, just concept art, vaguely alluding to Bionicle, vaguely alluding to like Matoro. The Bionicle logo, stuff like that. And then, like, mm. people were thinking, oh, he's going to re reveal something on April 1st, 2020. Um, ended up mm. being just like, hey, I'm sort of kind of trying to bring Bionicle back. I'm trying to have meetings with Lego. No promises. Oh, like, like, like 4 1 or like yeah. 1 4, like it's April 1st. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 It, it was a whole lot of <laughs> copium, I guess. Mmm. But yeah, so far, we have not seen the return of 14B 2020. Or... <laughs> it's, it won't be 2020 anymore. It won't be 2020. Ah, uh, COVID. COVID. There was going to be there was gonna be Bionicle G3, but uh, COVID, <laughs> but unfortunately. COVID. I think he yeah. literally was, like, having COVID symptoms in the live stream for April 1st, 2020. Bummer. Yeah. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> He's all right now, so it's fine. Sure. Yeah. But, How's that um, brain tumor? I mean, it was over 20 years ago, so I would assume fine by now. Well, but wasn't... I mean, it was... <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's probably still like taking pills for it or something. I mean, that's kind of the whole point was they couldn't get rid of it, right? I don't. I mean, I get. I no. guess he's managing it. I don't know how they manage that sort of thing, but yeah. I hope he's doing fine. I hope that hope the brain tumor has not done anything un, un, unwanted. I guess unprecedented. I hope it has not done anything unprecedented. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that even means, uh, but yes, it's true. Um, yeah. Right. One of my favorite Faber things, since we're in the topic, he made this, like, piece of art for a French Bionicle fan site. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me see if I can find it. It's like... Uh, he's very European. You can tell that, like, English is not his first language. Yeah. But, oh, here it is. It's called 
you are the true hero and your legend is now. I'll send you a photo, but it's basically like mysterious unnamed Turaga. There's the oh, mask yeah. of time. I thought it was cool because the it is the mask of time. He made like a um, he made like a whole blog post. It that's was basically pretty, like, that's cool. hey, it, it's cool that Bionicle fans still exist because he posted that in 2016. It's cool that mm -hmm. fans still exist and they're still dedicated. So I thought that was like cool and neat. That is cool. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. Oh, speaking I mean, of Mask of Time, there. Are, I don't think it was ever confirmed, but there are b very strong theories that suggest that G two actually is a continuation of G one or related in some way because of the Mask of Time. Oh, the the Mask of Time. There's like the one of the masks in g2 is like the top half of like the, exactly the... Yeah. yeah i saw that do you care to op opine about this no <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's it doesn't surprise me that much like of, of course there's going to be like connections between the reboot mm -hmm. but like i guess maybe i'd be somewhat interesting to like hear a breakdown of like how is it connected? What is what is the connection? Is it a time are we in a time loop? Do you know anything about it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's just vaguely connected. Um, I did I did see a thing about like the mask is like half of another mask or something. <laughs> it's it's an inter it's interesting. Do you have any um any fun bionicle head cannons? Do I have any fun bionicle head cannons? Yeah, or just head cannons in general. I don't know. Let me said, let me. But... You know what? Let, I gotta go to the bathroom. Let me go to the bathroom and I'll I'll think for a second. I'll be right back and I'll, I'll go to the bathroom out. as well too. Cause yeah. Oh, okay. Are <laughs> uh, you there? Yes. All right. My <laughs> funnest bionicle head cannon is that um. Uh, when, is that in Kingdom Hearts, when, uh, Sora, <laughs> Donald, and Goofy do a Trinity attack, they're actually forming a Kaita, because, because Wisdom and Valor, Wisdom and Valor forms. Wisdom that's and Valor wh forms. That's Waidu Waiduha and Akamai, Wisdom and Valor. It all fits, it all makes sense. Um, <laughs> what else, uh, I have notes here, I'm, like, scrolling through my notes to see if I made any, like... Stupid, uh, <laughs> stupid observations. Yeah. Um, I was thinking of asking no. as well, since you <laughs> mentioned the Kingdom Hearts, but you know, like, but you mm -hmm. already basically answered it <laughs> the uh, way earlier, saying that you saw parallels between like uh, the Geniverse and Bionicle, because like, oh. if you, if you could well. combine like one of your other lecture topics with, with Bionicle. But I guess there's not that much to choose from. <laughs> it was really... Not, oh, it's... So, I mean, Sonichu. I mean, Chris Chan likes Legos. I mean... Actually, uh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Chris had a... he ha She had a, 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 a Bionicle webpage that I had never heard of. Someone <laughs> pointed that out to me. Chris Chan's Bionicle site, yes. And yeah, there's a photo... It's just her. Like, it's like a really old photo of her, like in her room, and like and on her door, had the uh, a poster from like the two thousand one comics. Really? Yeah. Let me find it. That's that's great. But um, yeah. What? Basically wrapping up here because I, I don't think yeah. I got any any anything else. Um, ended on a low note. Uh, what things? Do you kind of not like as much from Bionicle? Or any complaints or stuff like that? Um, I don't like the yeah, I don't like the tone of the movies. Mm -hmm. I don't like. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't really like. Uh, I don't really like Faber's like insistence that love can't exist. <laughs> um, I don't really like. I'm sure. I'm sure I could think of more. I mean, there's a lot. I well, I don't. I don't like. I don't like how much of it is unfinished. Um, of course. I don't like. I I don't really like how it feels 
so often that there's only like a very small number of like people that matter mm -hmm. you know like there's only one vortex that matters and it's rudaka and there's only one steltian that matters and it's and it's sidorak and uh it doesn't it, I, very rarely do i get the sense other than the matoran of of metru and matanui rarely do i get the sense that like many people live in this world you know yeah uh that's kind of an issue sometimes yeah often i think like you know they open the door to having these different species in the mu but then if, if you like think about it for a little bit it's like well why do they exist you know why are they here why what purpose mm -hmm. do they serve if you know the mu the maternal universe is supposed to be like this machine that works together yeah that's why i kind of Maybe I headcanoned it a bit that, like, the other ones were not originally there. They just kind yeah. of evolved or were formed or someone ma someone else made them or something. Because, yeah, why would... The the Matoran are meant to, you know, upkeep the the robot. They're there to be its, like, cells doing all the work of maintaining it. Why are there... Why do you need <laughs> anything else? Yeah, but, yeah. um... Hard, hard, they, like they mutated, like the the Lego pieces were just that were just scattered around. They just a couple of them got knocked around and just fell together, and a, a I almost said a Skeksis, a Skakti <laughs> just just came out and was like, "Yeah, cool, I'll make more like myself." <laughs> um, very. You will never know. Maybe the great beings, maybe they. Put it there for some reason that we'll never understand. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. <sighs> That's it's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate. It's tragic. Yeah. It's tragic really. <laughs> um Yeah, alright. I think I'm I think I'm ready to Yeah. Wrap it up here probably. Right. So before we go, anything yeah. you wanna plug, shout out, um, lecture anything <laughs> i don't know watch my watch if you haven't seen if you haven't seen me on youtube i'm am i ben saint comics whatever you search ben saint if i'm in <laughs> i've had a book, couple of lecture videos that are the Mega Man one is the re most recent one check me out if you haven't seen them um I'm coming out with a new one hopefully pretty soon mm -hmm. i plan to record it very soon and then i hope not to take a, an age to edit it but we'll see all we right. will see. We Thank will Thank you for see. having me. Thank oh, you no. for having me here on, on the Lime Joint. <laughs> Thank you for being here and speaking to all our beautiful Limeys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Limeys. Wait, waited that until I, the very last possible second to bring that one up. <laughs> I, I, ho I hope that sticks. Well, uh, we'll see if we ever make any more of these. <laughs> cool. <laughs> all right uh sick all right well it's been well, it's been good uh yeah, i had a good good times thanks for chatting man <laughs> all right thank you and yeah, uh, that's yeah thank you all right everyone if you're still listening at this point and have a good day peace